Well, a sure sign of spring, the flowers. And if you have taken a walk in the woods, you may notice some wildflowers starting to pop up. And here with the dirt from the University of Illinois Extension, horticulture educator Ryan Pankoff. Ryan, I love spring because it means that things are blooming and we'll see all sorts of color and pretty things around. Today we're talking some of the wildflowers people might see around. Yeah, it's, it's a special time in Illinois woodlands. This is that special window in time where the tree canopy hasn't leafed out yet and there's full sun in the forest floor and our spring ephemeral wildflowers come out. So there, a lot of these plants are just here for a short time and as soon as the trees kind of leaf out and they're in the shade, they go to seed, they fade away, and they just kind of disappear. So but these are plants. these are kind of the first wildflowers for our pollinators, though. So that's why they're yes. somewhat important. Yeah, they're incredibly important because they're the first food source for pollinators, and especially um, bumblebees, due to their life cycle. Uh, you know, lots of bees exist in colonies. Everybody knows that. But bumblebees overwinter as a solitary queen. So there's not a colony she has. She needs to awaken the springtime, find food resources, and start to build that colony for the year. So we're finding that it's incredibly important for bumblebee lifestyle, life, the life cycle, and that also both bumblebees and these wildflowers are declining in, in a lot of places around the U.S. Interesting. Uh, researchers at the INHS, the Illinois Natural History Survey, have looked at the last couple decades of data on these spring ephemeral wildflowers and their decline, their populations are declining across the state, so they're, they're in a little bit of trouble. Now, when you say they're there for a short amount of time, how, how long is that? How's a, how, long, how short is short? Well, it varies by species, but there's some species that wrap up everything from emergence to flowering to setting seed in about a month. Wow, so, so not long at all. Not very long. We've, we've got some um, images here of sure. some examples, so kind of walk us through what we're seeing and where we might see them. Sure, Are they all native, sure. I'm guessing, to Illinois? Yeah, every Everything that we'll kind of see today is native, and this is the first, the harbinger of spring. And as you can see, it's a tiny, tiny flower, which makes it difficult to photograph. Is this that is, in leaves? That, those are leaves behind it that you can yeah. see there. And this, this photograph was taken by one of our Master Naturalist volunteers, Teresa DeWitt. So thanks to her for sharing her photography skills. But tiny little flower, you almost don't see it sometimes, but that is the first spring wildflower I usually ever notice. So, and that one's hard to uh, notice. It looks yeah, hard to notice, one. but if you're looking close, you can see it. And interestingly, it's, it kind of sporadically appears around the state. So it, we, we kind of don't know why. It doesn't, it's not north to south, that distribution. It just is kind of... Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> be on the lookout for that one. Um, the next one is bloodroot, also very early, and this is this picture was from Central Illinois about this time last year. So I think you can probably find bloodroot around. It's more common. It's in about every county in the state. Um, interestingly, it has a, a red juice that comes out of its roots Ooh. that looks like blood from the name. Kind of creepy. Um, Native Americans <laughs> use it as a dye. There's um, some claimed pharmaceutical characteristics of that uh, juice or whatever you want to call that. Um, that it may be antibacterial. There's not necessarily science behind that, but there's lots of claims to the value of that plant. Huh. Uh, next is spring beauties. And if you notice here, this picture is in a stand of grass. So this is at a park where these grow amongst the turf grass. So while you can find them in the woodlands, they also um, can grow in a lawn, and if you delay mowing, you can have those as little spring wildflowers. Well, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Delay the mowing, then. Yeah. Yeah. Just another reason to put it off. Another I love it. <laughs> yes. Now, this is kind of a neat one, uh, Dutchman's Breeches, and just one of the weirdest looking flowers. I think, you know, it looks like kind of a little pair of pants is how I've always <laughs> kind, of, kind of thought about that one. But um, it's a little later than, you know, spring beauties. Kind of, we're kind of going in progression of the spring here. So we aren't probably seeing spring beauties yet or Dutchman's Breeches yet. That's yet so to come So stay in. tuned. Stay yes. tuned. All right, is this, I think, our final one? Uh, I think we have one more after this. Okay. This is Virginia Bluebells, one of my favorites, and I just love the, the colors that it has. And here you see kind of those early leaves that are coming out right now. You can find some of these in certain spots where it's warm enough, and they're really purple colored. You can kind of see the little flowers starting to form there, so they're, they're even neat just as they come out, but um, just a really um, pretty wildflower as it completely emerges. So our last one that we'll talk about today is wild geranium, and it's a little later. It actually flowers for about a month, so it sticks around for some of these, uh, you know, compared to some of these other plants, but um, that's one that actually does well in cultivation. You can actually plant in your yard, and um, it's sensitive to moisture, so as long as it's not super-duper dry, um, that can grow almost in full sun in your yard. So. Well, there you go. Very cool. Lots yeah. to look out for this spring, and now you know what to look for and what you might be looking at. We'll connect you with all we just learned at seealiving.tv.